Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. We are in the thick of it. 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. We've been bringing you Olympic legends, Olympic champions, and everything in between uh, to give us their analysis on what they've been seeing from Team USA in Tokyo. And today we are talking to Olympic champion, to I am savant, Melanie Morgalis. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're busy going to the fair, going to the beach with your nephews, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> But living the life, living the life. Uh, and 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 now you're, you're just being a swim fan. What is it, what has it been like just to get to watch the Olympics from your couch? It's honestly been crazy. Um, my best friend was texting me yesterday, and she's like, "What's the deal? Like, I feel like swimming is always on at the Olympics, and like I'm having such a hard time because like I feel like normally when I turn it on, swimming is on, and I'm getting so annoyed. Like, when is swimming?" And I was like, dude, honestly, like the last time I like really watched the Olympics was 2008. And I mean, I was so young then. In 2012, the only thing I watched was Schmidty's Too Free. In 2016, I was there. So I was like, I feel like I'm having a whole new experience just watching the Olympics. Um, but it's really crazy, like, because people always talk about how people love to watch swimming at the Olympics. And I totally get it now because, you know, they say like, they're watching, they're like, it's something relatable. Like they're like, oh, I feel like I could do that. And I'm like sitting here and I feel the same way. I'm like, this is like, it's so inspiring to watch. And it's so cool. I mean, I've like, I've enjoyed this week a lot. It's been, it's been really cool. <laughs> That's that's funny to hear. I feel like you saying, I feel like I could do this is a little different than most people <laughs> saying, I feel like I could do this. Uh, it may be a little bit different, but I mean, it yeah, it's just been so inspiring to watch all the swimmers. That's that that's super that's super cool. That's great to hear. Is there a race that stood out to you or a moment that stood out to you this week so far? Um I mean, I've really loved both the IMs. I mean, having two American women medal in both IMs, that is like, I mean, that is so cool to see. Um, I was so happy for those people. And I was so happy for Yui. She's so sweet. And I mean, I've raced her multiple times now. And she's always like, she always seems so happy to see me just because she's such a nice person. Um, so I was really happy to see her win. Um, I thought that was so special for her to win in her home country. Um, so I really, really enjoyed the women's IMs. I really enjoyed watching Chase and Jay start off. I mean, that was, I mean, for the dogs to start off that way was incredible. Um, I mean, even, I mean, the women's hunter breast, that, uh, it, it got, I got, yeah. Unfortunately, me and my best friend were watching different feeds. Okay. So at we're watching it and at the 50, my sister-in-law's like, I think Lydia's gonna win. And I'm like, and then all of a sudden I get a text on my phone, like Lydia, oh my God. And I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah, she won, but I'm not gonna like ruin it for everyone in this room. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> That yeah, like I f I feel like we uh we've gotten a few different feeds over the course of of the days, and it's just like okay, no, don't tell me, I don't want yeah. to know, I have to see it for myself. Yeah, uh, even um since I'm out in California and Nick was supposed to swim at three fifty a.m. and I'm like Nick, you're gonna have to make semifinals because <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna wake up for that one because I actually woke up at four forty to watch Nat on the relay because I was like. Okay just in case she's not in the finals really. Like I have to see her swim at the Olympics. Um, and I never got back to bed after that. So I was like, I can't wake up at 3.50 AM and then run after my little nephews all day long. Like it's just, I'm gonna end up dying. So 
I was like, Nick, I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to watch your race. Cause I figured out how to go back and watch the races after they had been swum. Mm-hmm. So I'm like waiting for his heat. Cause I don't know how to fast forward and he's in heat five and I'm waiting for his heat. And I like see that I had had a Snapchat. So I look at the Snapchat and it's a Snapchat of Nick winning his heat. And I'm like, no, I didn't want to know until I saw. <laughs> and then I had like texted Nat back and she's like texting me. I'm like, no, I haven't seen it yet. I want to like watch the race and where I saw the results. <laughs> dude they need to like spoilers guys come on yeah yeah um dude i hear you with the the, just the weird times i mean it's prelims in the morning and finals at night for us kind of but it's also like yeah like i'm getting up i'm on central time and i still get up for an hour to watch prelims and then go back to bed for like two or three hours because it's like this is too much yeah it's yeah it's pretty crazy the timing and i mean even though like I know the time difference because I've been talking to them. Like I still am so confused by it that I'm like, like, I think I texted Nat good luck, like maybe like 12 hours before her swim, because I was like, I can't miss saying good luck. And I was like, even though I know when you're going off my time, like I'm still so confused because you're like in another country, like in the future. And I'm like, I can't miss saying good luck. I'm like, I know this is like so far ahead of time, but I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also like, okay, they're 14 hours ahead, but then sometimes I'll like subtract 14 hours from like our current time and like go the wrong way. And it's like, Oh no, that's yeah. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot. <laughs> so let, let's get into those. I am races a little bit. Um, one fun factoid that we that was brought to our attention was that Ohashi, Yui Ohashi, is the seventh woman in a row to sweep the IMs at the Olympics. Wow. Yeah, so going back to 96. Uh, Holy cow. The, the same person has won the 200 and 400 IM at the Olympics every single time. I'll tell you why I think, why I personally think that that's insane. I think that's insane because I think it's so hard to have your 400 and your 200 firing at the same time. I have rarely gotten them both to be really good at the same time. So to me, that's impressive. I mean, like, like when I think of like Katinka winning all the time, like both, even when you look at it, a lot of times she is a lot better at one versus the other at the meet, even if she's winning them both, but she's just so good that she can still win them both. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I didn't realize that that was like a statistic. I mean, that's insane. And that makes it even cooler that she won both. I agreed. I, yeah, I was in shock. I heard it on the broadcast and I was like, what? Like, no way is that and then I was like well okay Katinka yeah and like I remembered Stephanie Rice I had forgotten Yishi win in 2012 and then personally I didn't know who had who had done it um before 2008 but yeah like since 96 so what obviously obviously they're two very different events even though they're both medleys the 4IM is so much more you know so much longer so much a lot a lot more endurance based what do you think makes it such a big difference um to have both firing at the same time um i think that it has something to do with um just the different tempos of the race um because you have so many like since you're swimming all four strokes like i think it's different when you're just swimming like say just freestyle so you're just going to do like the 100 and 200 free and yeah you're swimming different tempos but it's the same stroke so it's not like like okay i'm just going to switch tempos for this whole race Versus in the IM, you have four different strokes and you're going to, I mean, I don't know how many people would be doing the same tempo in both the 200 and the 400 IM and, and across four strokes. So to me, I feel like that's what makes it hard to have them both firing because, I mean, you really have to like figure out that body movement. And um, I know for me personally, like I know that when I was just swimming the 200 IM, the first 50 of the 200 IM always felt like so easy, like just like easy, fast speed. And then as soon as I added the 400 IM in there, if I had done the 400 IM and then tried to do the 200 IM, 
that 50 fly felt like I really was pushing it because of that faster tempo. Um, and I feel like that kind of messes you up because you don't want to feel that in fly. Um, you know, you want to feel that easy, relaxed speed. So, I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't know what other people's opinion is, but that's just my thought. Uh, and that's, that's why we're bringing you in to get, the, <laughs> to get the master wisdom. Uh, <laughs> And as you mentioned, we had four Americans medal in the IM events, four different Americans medal in the IM events. Yeah. When you were watching, let's start with the 400 IM. When you were watching that race, did you notice anything specific about like, oh, they did that this way. They did that this way. It's like, oh, that's an interesting way to swim the race. Yeah. Um, I personally think that Emma always swims a smart race. And I think the reason that she swims such a smart race is because in season, I've noticed she's not afraid to go out and die in season. She's not afraid to feel that pain. And I've noticed that swimming against her. And I think that's what has made her so good um, this summer is because like me, if I'm like in season, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to like swim this race so I can finish. And it's like, she doesn't even have that on her mind. So I think her swimming like that all the time is what has enabled her to swim so fast this summer is because she's like, okay, now that she's tapered and everything feels good, she can push it out and she can finish. Um, I mean, I love watching the first 200 of Haley's 400. I love, cause I mean, swimming with her at Georgia, for so long, I wanted her to be doing that. I wanted her to be pushing out the 200 and she wasn't doing that. And I like, I always was confused by that because I'm like, you're so good at fly. You're so good at back. And yeah, she would be good at it, but she wouldn't push it out. Um, so I really like that she's doing that. Um, and I mean, Yui's breaststroke split was really good. That was, I was really impressed by her breaststroke split. I mean, all of her strokes are absolutely beautiful. Um, and yeah, I thought her breaststroke split was definitely very good. Um, I would say Katinka. I honestly, like, I want to say that I feel bad for her, but I don't want to sound like negative. Like, I'm not saying that I'm like, like, I don't want it to sound like I'm pitying her. Um, but I think that you could tell in the race how hard she was trying and, you know, she's been so good for so long. I've looked up to her for so long. I mean, ever since I have like been competing internationally, she's always been there, you know? So I've always been looking up to her and to see her try so hard and, um, to end up where she did, but like, granted, I mean, she's at the Olympics and she's in top eight, like that is amazing for, you know, for most people, that is amazing. Um, but just to come from where she was, um, but it was nice to just see that she like really was trying and she really never gave up on it. She, she definitely put herself in a position to, to, to go for it. And it, it, like you said, it seems like she did and came up short of a medal, but like you said, top eight, she's, she's already got so many accolades. It's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was tough to see, but I think I think this Olympics is just a, a young a young person's games. Yeah, you know it's so crazy because I'm watching the events and it's like the difference between event to event. It's like some events I feel that you could tell um, that the COVID year wasn't friendly to them. And some of the events, I feel that you could tell that the COVID year was very friendly to them. So I think that that's really interesting that it hasn't been like a whole sport wide thing. It's really like event by event, what has happened in the last year. So I, I, I mean, that's really interesting. Like that is something that I almost can't even wrap my head around because I don't know. I don't know what would have made the difference between different events. Um, maybe it's just based on. I mean, I haven't looked at how old everyone is. So maybe that is like the difference between everything. I don't know. I, I agree with you because it's not like, oh, well, like shorter events that got faster than longer events didn't. It's like women's 400 free was insanely fast yeah. for, from like yeah. top to bottom, not just, not just Ariane and Katie, you know, it's yeah. like 
that like women's 400 IM was really deep. I mean, it, yeah, yeah all of a, there's, like you said, it's just event to event. It's, it's, it differs a lot. Yeah. Um, so let's jump to the, the 200 IM now, which was the reason such- people go to meets, <laughs> the reason that the fans come. <laughs> The people's event. Yes. <laughs> uh, which the women's turn I am, I think was one of the funnest races to watch just because of how close it was yeah. with, with Kate and Alex and Yui. It was so tight. Um, so, so give me your analysis. What do you, what did you see from that race? Um, I'll, you know, I'm like somebody that's like sometimes honest to like a bad, like a bad point. Um, and I hope I don't get slack for saying this, but I was shocked at, uh, the overall time of the tuner I am. Um, I thought to win, you would have needed to be faster. Um, but you know, that's just how it is sometimes, you know, I think maybe if, um, Kaylee was in it, it would have been a different story. Um, but you know, like they always say, like maybe, um, I don't know, like Sarah or, uh, Kate Campbell is first in the 100 free at the end of the year, but Simone wins at Worlds. Like their time is first, but Simone wins. So, you know, it's like, it's so hard to look at times, but like to me, looking at time from the tournament, I'm like, like processing them, but it's not about the times. Um, I think I really was watching it and I was, you know, I was wondering if, like, if what we saw is kind of the next people you know um if that makes sense because you know like katink has been there for so long i've been there for a few years now um you know sydney like we've just had the same people for a good amount of time like a good chunk of time um and i was kind of wondering if what i was watching was kind of the next phase of 200 diameters i mean i think that alex can be so fast and I told her after her swim at trials that like she can be so fast because I was looking at her splits and granted going out that fast at the 150 obviously really hurt her because her last split was very, you know, it, it wasn't pretty slow. Even Alex will say that. So I I don't feel bad saying that because even Alex will tell you that. But the fact that she can even be there at the 150 is a really good sign for her moving forward, I think, personally. And I think, I mean, Kate is, I mean, her fly is beautiful. Like, it's incredible. And her brushstroke is great. She finishes so well. Like, I mean, it's just insane how good she finishes. As soon as she gets her backstroke just a little bit better, which I mean, I've been there. Like I've been like, okay, I'm just going to go the same time, same time. And then it's like, okay, that one stroke needs to be better. And then you drop a bunch of time. And I think that's what will happen to Kate. And I mean, like I already said for the four and Mui strokes are just beautiful. Um, yeah. And, and Abby Wood. I mean, I, I mean, I didn't know who Abby was until I sell this past year. So I think that she could really be someone that's going to be very, very competitive um, in the next few years, you know? I'm I'm glad you brought her up because I think she is, I don't want to say she's having a subpar Olympics, but I think her Olympics is not indicative of where she's at or where she's going to be very soon because we saw her break out in ISL, I think this year, at British and European championships, she was just on fire, two free, two IM, two breasts. And so it's like, I, I, I don't think this meet is indicative of, of what we're going to see from her down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure this is just the beginning for her. I think, well, I hope one being there is going to give her confidence moving forward. And then two, you know, it sucks to like be there and get fourth. I have been fourth many times. <laughs> Um, but I hope that that is what's going to like light that fire under her butt, um, to really show what she can do because I mean, she's another one who all of her strokes are really, really beautiful. Um, and her underwaters are great. So yeah, I think like, 
I, I really am thinking that what we saw last night in Women's Sooner Than I Am is really what we're going to start to see in the next few years. I think these are really going to be the girls that are going to start taking over. I, I would love to see it personally. And, you know, it's always good to have that young blood, those fresh faces in there. Um, yeah. So you hit on something, you know, Kate Douglas's backstroke, you, you, on, on improving one particular stroke, how did you do that? Um, just, just getting that one stroke to get to the next level. Um, Jack would like make me do extra at the end of like practice all the time. Like, just like literally just putting on a strap at the end of practice, like practice is over. Like, okay, Mel do like eight twenty five. backstroke strap. And it's just like, it's, so it's not like a major thing. I think it's actually a lot easier than people would think because like granted it might be your bad stroke but you're still doing it in practice all the time but it's just like doing that little bit extra so that's why I think that like it's really not going to be hard for Kate to get that faster because I think that it's just going to take such a little amount for her and I mean a lot of times like once it clicks for you then like it's like just like a flip of a switch yeah uh just to clarify, 825s with a strap around your feet. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I know the reason, but why why do you why do you do that? Why with a strap? Um, well, for me personally, uh tempo. My tempo used to be, I mean, my tempo was always slow. That that was like back to like my club swimming days that I was like just so slow tempo. So one tempo and two, um, you know, it forces you to keep good body line because if you don't, you're just going to sink. And three, just like getting that extra practice of pulling. So once you like, if you're like, okay, well, I got to get my tempo up to like make it across the pool and okay, I got to get the body line. Then it's like, okay, now I got to do both these things and like actually pull water with my arms. So that's why it's like such a little thing, but like, you're getting all three of those things all together. And I think that that's like, what's like the most, like it, yeah, it just comes together pretty quickly. Nice. And so, so is there any, um, my, my line of reasoning or my guess was going to be that, that in backstroke, you're not using your legs a ton anyway for the 200 I am. Is, is there any conservation of legs throughout that race? Um, especially in the backstroke or are you kicking your butt off and am I totally off? Uh, I mean, for me personally, I am like such a kicker that I have to kick. I think for, I think it changes for other people. I wish that I didn't have to kick in backstroke. I mean, I've gotten to meet the floor and Jack's like, okay, lay off the legs and backstroke. And I'm like, but I've literally like, haven't trained that way. Like ever, like in the months leading up to this meet, I haven't trained no legs. But we get to the meet and you're like, okay, just lay off your legs. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm doing like a 30 beat kick in backstroke in practice to move. So I don't think I can lay off my legs. Um, so for me personally, no, I think that people that are better than me at backstroke do get to lay off their legs. Like I'm sure that Baker um, is not ripping her legs in backstroke and I am. Um, I think that people that can do that are very lucky. <laughs> I wish that I could have swam like that, but yeah, no, for me, it's definitely too much kick. <laughs> if, if you're working on a stroke, let's say backstroke, um, for an IM during a practice, is that tempo or is that even technique going to be different than if you're doing like a pace for a 200 backstroke or a, or a breaststroke? Is that, does that differ at all for you? Um, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, obviously I hadn't been focusing on the four I am. I was pretty open about that before and then kind of flipped the switch, um, to start focusing on that. So like for me, I would like do like, if I'm like in a four I am set, I would try to swim backstroke, like how I want it to feel in the race, not like, um, Cause like I'm someone that can like get caught up. So if I'm like racing someone, I will like start trying to just like flail around to try to like keep up with them or whatever. So like really being like aware 
of what you're doing, I think is important. And that was like something that I did a lot more this year was like trying to be like, okay, I'm doing a 400 IM set. Let me swim backstroke the way that I want my backstroke to be. And I am. And that for me is a slower tempo. I mean, even at trials, like getting ready, Jack was giving me like a lot of fifties um, backstroke, like in the few days leading up to the meet. And I remember the first day I did a backstroke 50 and I was like for the 4 and he's like, yeah, for 4 a.m. And apparently Nat was standing there with the coaches and she was like, they were all like, is she supposed to be going this slow? Cause like my tempo was like really like really slow. And then for the rest of the fifties, the rest of the time I put in a tempo trainer. Um, cause I needed to like bring my tempo up. Um, I, so sometimes I think that switching between them, um, can be hard, but definitely like sometimes if I'm having like a bad day and I'm going to be like doing a lot of backstroke, I will just put in my tempo trainer say like if we're doing a 50 set, I'll put in my tempo trainer at 200 IM pace just to like try to get me moving in some way. If I'm hearing that beep and I'm like, okay, you got to at least just hit this. Like if nothing else, just hit your tempo. Um, so yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so let's, let's move on. I want to preview this four by two women's relay tonight. Can you tell me about is it, is it, was it different being in that final in 2016 and maybe at a world championships or, or another relay final for the four by two? Um, well, I was in prelims in 2016 and then I got to be in finals in 2017 and 2019. And, you know, it's really interesting because I mean, the only time I thought I was going to throw up for a race was before the finals relay in 2017 by the, for the four by two. And I remember they were starting to line us like line up the countries. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to throw up. But I was just like trying to be like, just like a fun person. So I like, didn't tell anybody like, I'm just like, yeah, let's go guys. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, I'm literally going to throw up. Um, I mean, but it's kind of interesting because I feel like what a lot of people don't know is because, you know, like Maya came on for finals in 2016 and people were like, Mel, you got to fight for your spot. Like you're the one that did the tuner free and the tuner I am at trials. Like you fought for that spot, like go fight for your spot, like whatever. And I'm like, one, if I'm not the best person for the job, I'm not the best person for the job. And two, what a lot of people really don't know is that when we were supposed to have a team meeting about the four by 200 freestyle relay, and it was the night that I was swimming the 200 IM and whatever coach was like in charge of that meeting didn't show up. So it was just like the four of us girls standing there. And somebody said, uh, Mel, I heard you're, that you're anchoring like in prelims. And I burst into tears. I immediately started crying and I was like, I like immediately felt so much pressure. And I was like, I can't, I can't do that. And I had been like so mentally good all summer. Like I remember Jack at Charles was like, you are having just so much fun. Like I can see on your face. And so I show up the pool, show up to the pool for the final of and I am. And Jack's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Cause like, he can tell that I'm like freaking out. And I'm like, Jack, they told me I'm anchoring the relay tomorrow morning. Like, and he's like, okay, calm down. And they like had to have like Greg come over and tell me that I wasn't anchoring. So like, once you have a swimmer that like has like completely has a meltdown just because she hears that she's anchoring the relay in prelims, like, yeah, she's probably not the girl that you want to put on the finals relay, which I completely understand. And like, I remember in 2017, when I got to be on the finals relay, Jack and I had the conversation like, yeah, you weren't ready for this last year, but like, that's okay. Like you were ready for the job that you had last year. And like, that's where you were. Um, and I mean, I feel like the four by two, I mean, I feel like I've always been in the ready room with people that it's always like such a great group of girls. So one, I think that they're going to have fun. I want to say tonight, but it's there tomorrow morning. <laughs> like one, like they're going to have fun. Schmitty's in there. I mean, 
I'll say at SECs my freshman year, I was so nervous for the AP Relay, uh, the first night of SECs. And Schmitty, like, completely turned me around. So having her in the ready room is one such an advantage for the USA, you know? And two, I mean, Katie McLaughlin, I've seen her come alive on relays. So, you like, she's going to swim well. Um, I mean, I'm just assuming that she's on the relay. I don't have any insider info. <laughs> and um, I'm assuming that Paige Madden is on the relay. And I'm sure she is, like, flying high after her split this morning. Um, so, you know, I hope that they just, like, feel good and are really happy. Um, I hope that they don't feel how I felt in, like, hearing that I was anchoring in 2016 or hearing that – or just, like, being in the ready room in 2017. I just hope that they're just having fun and really – um, going to embrace what they, what they get to do. I hope so too. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would, that would, that would definitely be cool. It's going to be a great race. I would, I would also assume Katie and Paige are on that night relay. Not sure yet though, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk about, let's talk about the real race coming up. The men's tuna breast final. Oh my gosh. I mean, like, I was FaceTiming Nick last night, and I'm like, dude, what's the deal here? Like, like, because, you know, like, um, what, in 2019, it was, like, the three guys that had held the world record all in 2019, and the Japanese guy isn't there, mm -hmm. and the Australian guy didn't make it to the final, make it. <laughs> and uh, Chip, Chip Cobb, whatever, he... I'm like, I was asking him, I'm like, dude, what do you think? Like, is he just having it off me? Or like, is he just waiting for finals? Like, what's going to happen here? Um, dude, because it's so, because I think what, um, for me, because I would say like, okay, Nick is like, I mean, Nick and I have like, I mean, he's been my best friend for like so many years now, right? And I've seen a transformation in him, like big time, especially after 2016. Um, he took 2016 really hard. And I think what he's been able to do since then is he's been able to ride the highs and the lows. And, you know, he's been good either way, like mentally, which is obviously the most important thing. And like after seeing such a change in him and just like witnessing it firsthand, I just feel that he's in such a good spot mentally, which is so important. And obviously he's getting in a good spot physically. Um, so, I mean, I'm really excited to see, I'm probably going to be pretty nervous. I mean, I was like a nervous wreck at trials. Like when he was doing the tuna breast, I couldn't feel my feet. So, and like, so far at this Olympics, I've been like pretty even keel. I think tonight I'm going to be like, pretty freaking out but I mean either way like what he's accomplished and to like be able to come back as somebody who I mean if you think back to how he was like 2013 2014 2015 going into 2016 he was he was in the top two you know all those years he was at worlds at pan packs and then to go to 2016 and to really really not perform the way that he wanted to and and then to come back and be like no, like this isn't what like is left for me. So either way, I think that what he's accomplished is incredible because, you know, not a lot of people can like really take like that kind of defeat, I would think. Um, but the only thing that I'm thinking is, you know, men's to fly. They, they're all going the same times, right? prelims, semifinals, all the guys are going the same times, all of a sudden they get to finals, and then it's a huge spread. Because I'm thinking it's going to be me lock, and then just a line of guys, you know? And then yes. I'm looking at the race, the last 50, I'm like, this isn't what I was expecting. Yeah, they're all over. <laughs> yeah, so that's the only thing that's like, it's in my head about two grasses. I'm like, so is this going to be like, it's just going to be all over the place, or is it going to be like, okay, like Nick's just like swimming really well. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm excited. The, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know what to think in this men's tournament <laughs> just because it's like, well, the, yeah, semifinals 
did not feel telling at all. Uh, yeah. It was, yeah, we, we have a 2073 from the Australian guy. And then it's like seven, nine to eight, seven. So like eight tenths between second and eighth seed. Yeah. So like, are they all going to be coming in together or is it just going to be like all over the place is, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited either way. I think that what he's accomplished is great, obviously, but I am, I am really excited. And I mean, for me, I'm like, you know, I'm like doing a little twinkling in my head. I'm like, you know, he did go 58.5 at trials and 100 press. You know, if he has like a really good swim tonight, like somehow does he get on that medley relay? You know, like I would just love for him to have that experience. So for me, I'm like, but I haven't like, I haven't like wanted to say anything to him. But to me, that's like what's been going through my head. I'm like, come on, Nick, just like have that swim that makes the coaches go like, yeah, like that's our guy, you know? Um, I, yeah, no, I hear you. I, I think it was last night. Um, I was watching with Mel Stewart and, and he was like, what, what does Fink have to go to get on the relay? And I'm like, seven, three. Yeah. I, I mean, it, because, you know, it's like Andrew Wilson, Michael Andrew, like they are in their spots it, it, yeah. it trials, but it's like, but if he's on, you have yeah. to, you have yeah, to. That's- thing is like if you're the person that's on like you're on I mean I have been on a medley relay at Worlds <laughs> like, like like anything can happen you know like if if anything says that anything can happen it's me being on brushstroke in prelims of the medley relay I remember Greg Meehan's like I can't believe that I'm turning in your name right now on this relay card and I'm like I can't believe it either but if I can do it, I'm like, Nick can do it. Like, I believe in him. <laughs> I, and, but then there's also the mixed medley, which is just such a, such a what wild card. I think it's day seven. I think it's day seven. Um, well, I mean, me... what day are we on? I mean, the days don't even make any sense. Yeah, I know. This is yeah. day five. It's on Thursday. It's third. God, it's Thursday there, so Friday morning. So it's I don't know. So honestly, does, hey, I don't know. Hey, wait, I have a question. So is how they count the days at the meet, like day one? Okay, so day one. Okay, no, no, no. Because day one had to have been the first prelims. Yeah. So then was day I think the first was finals was day, day two, two, the finals and the next prelims. I think so. Very interesting because I was wondering if they still classified the finals the next morning as day one. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I mean, we're we're in new territory here. I don't know. It's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. It's the wild west. So so what I'm seeing right now is that they're gonna have prelims of the mixed medley t- tomorrow. Like for the U.S., it's tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. And so in the next prelim session, and then they're going to have the final on Saturday. No, that, that can't be right because that's the last day of the meet. So it's not, <laughs> I don't know. Why do they have to know. make it so difficult? <laughs> what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that Nick, I feel like Nick, no matter how he performs in the 200 has a shot at being on the prelims of the mixed medley, at least where he would get, that shot to, 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 to throw yeah. up a split, a hundred split of some, of some kind. I haven't even thought of that. You know, I've also been thinking what they're going to do with the mixed medley because haven't they put Lily on breaststroke before? Yeah. So, I, so now what happens now? What yeah. happens when Lydia is beats Lily? Do they put her on there? I don't. Or do they just change? Do they just go male, male, female, female? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question, especially because uh, Michael Andrew and Andrew Wilson in the hundred breast were like off their best times. So, and Adam Peaty was not, <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> he's throwing down. So it's like, oh, what do we do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not envious of the coaching decision there. I mean, does 
I, th- I think what does Simone even get thrown on now? Does she get thrown on to? I don't even. I mean, I know that she had a good split, but I don't know how her split compared to the other splits on the relay. Yeah, I know. I know Simone was two nine in the four hundred free relay. And what was? Abby? I know Abby was two six. Oh, okay. Um, and so uh, Abby's obviously got a couple more hundred frees to swim. Yeah, and then. I, I would think in the mixed medley prelims, they just kind of try something that they think is going to be pretty good and see how it goes. <laughs> I mean, that's really all you can do. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, all I can say is I've been having, I feel like I've been such a swim nerd this week, which I feel that I've like, like that's not really my thing. And it's been a lot of fun to just like kind of nerd out and just be like, I don't know. Even this. It's fun to have this conversation. Just like, like, what are you thinking? What am I thinking? Like, what are the coaches thinking? I mean, it, and I know that like, I mean, there was so many coaches in Hawaii, but I think that not all of them went to Tokyo. Right. But there's still a ton of coaches. There's still two more than normal. I think because the men's roster had two less swimmers. So they got to bring two more coaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then I there were that... and then there were like even more coaches in Hawaii. Wait, so there's only 24 men? Mhm. And 20 is there 26 women? Yeah. Okay, because I I thought I mean I guess I didn't really understand the thing with Reinhold, but I just knew I just, I thought that the roster was maxed. The the thing with Reinhold was that there was so many you can only take a certain number of relay only swimmers, which which I, I didn't know <laughs> either. Um, I guess we, we were, we had, we had the cap of, of relay only swimmers at like six or five or something. Oh, uh, speaking of relay only swimmers, what's going to happen with Australia tonight in the relay? Yeah. Uh, did they have to, do they have to swim Leah Neal? They do. They, they're, they have four completely new swimmers. Four. Yeah. Com- so they have. Um, oh, because they have they have to use her, and they'll use Maddie, yep. Ariane, and yep. uh, Emma. Wow. Yeah. I mean, what's crazy to because I w- I watched the replay this morning, and I mean, literally never doubt Team USA. You put the cap on, the flags on your head, like you can do something special. Never doubt Team USA. But I'm looking at the Australian relay this morning. I'm going, you're telling me that one of the girls who has the world record on this relay in this event is swimming in prelims for Australia and won't be swimming in the finals relay. That's a dangerous thought. I mean, yeah. and it's not like she's like, not like, I mean, she had a great split. Yeah. So I'm like, and then the that's eight. crazy <laughs> that like you're leaving like, what you have is better than one of the girls who has already broken the world record, a part of your relay. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, are they going to smash the world record or is what's going to, or is it just going to, is it just going to like, who knows what's going to happen? Who, I don't know. I, I, my, my, my feeling is they're going to smash it. <laughs> because Ariane just went 53, five. Yeah. But she went faster at their trials, right? She did. Cause that was when she was mad cause she yeah. missed WR. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's like McKeon's on, but the, yeah, they're leaving a one fifty five one flat start. Off that's crazy. The relay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's sick for them. <laughs> I mean, that was like something that I was talking to uh, Russell, Mark and Lindsay about at trials is I was like, what the heck is Australia doing that they are just their freestyle? Like what are they doing in freestyle that like we haven't quite seen the figure out yet? You know, Mm. like, is it a way that they're training? Is it, I mean, you can see in their strokes, like when they show the underwater, like those girls are pulling water. So, I mean, one of the girls, cause I had looked at the splits already and then I'm watching her swim and I'm like, I forget what, like maybe 156 or something. I was like, you're telling me this girl is going 156 right now? Because above the water, she looked like she's just chilling. 
and her catch underwater though once they just showed her underwater i'm like like how much water is she pulling um i mean i want to know what i'm doing for freestyle because it's crazy the amount of depth that they have like been able to show in the 100 and the 200 free you know what are, what are they getting into over there i don't know it is did russell or <laughs> Lindsay have anything to say well they were like well first they they were saying that they have like people that like really specialize mm -hmm. in those events whereas they were saying for us the 200 free i mean but we like realistically, when you think about it, like people do specialize, like Schmitty specializes in two free. Yeah. But like, when you think about like Ledecky who swims a two free, but she also swims four and eight or a mile, like me who like, I'm like, okay, I'm an I am or, but I'll do the two free or like Katie McLaughlin who does the hundred fly, but she's like, okay, I'll do two free. So like their thought was like that we don't have like enough of like the, I guess like top people just like focused on like 200 free, but I'm thinking, but you're telling me there's no kids out there that are just like, there's obviously people just focus on that, you know? So like, to me, I'm like, I don't know if that's the answer. Like, but they were saying like, that's what like people have been saying about America, American backstroke, you know? So I guess like, I guess when you put it into that perspective, when you say like, okay, like the men and women have been killing American backstroke for so long. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't even know what they've been doing because I clearly haven't been doing it. So <laughs> <laughs> good point. <laughs> uh, I mean, a 200 free is the, that weird in between though, where it's like, if you're good at the 200 free, I, I would think a lot of people are either gonna gonna it's like okay I'll just tra go train distance then or like I'll train for like the 400 or something because I have that endurance and I can do it or they're like well I'm gonna train for the 100 because that's way yeah. easier than the 200 yeah and so it's kind of like that in between maybe no man's land where it's like maybe there aren't as many people specializing in it yeah I have no idea I mean but like when you think of it, like, think of like, uh, Arnie, who's obviously very good at the 200 and the 400 free, or, um, I know McKeon is obviously very good at the hundred and 200. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like they're not like, and, and hundred fly. Yeah. So it's not yeah. like they're not doing point. the same thing too. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, until like somebody sneaks into Australia and like starts like getting in on their practices. I don't know if we're going to like, know like, you know, because I feel like the same arguments that you can make for them, you can make for somebody to hear, you know, mm. but I mean, the depth is just insane. <laughs> they, they, their women look so strong at this meet and uh, it's, it's kind of cool to see, right. It's, it's, it's kind of, it I honestly think it is really cool because you know, I think that they had such a, like, obviously Australia has been good at swimming for like a very long time, but I think that a lot of times that they had like that issue that they were swimming so fast in season and then like at worlds or the Olympics or whatever, they weren't performing up to what they had been. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I, I mean, I also think that it's like really cool to see how well they're performing. Um, you know, it's kind of scary, like, because they're kind of like really figuring it out. And obviously, I want Team USA to be the best. But, you know, I think that being like, I think Team USA is always going to, you know, like have their response, you know, I think that, um, I mean, for everyone who made the team this year after the year that we've all gone through, and to be able to go there and do the job, I think that they're going to really, I mean, I don't see a way that people that have made the team this year aren't going to just like take off, you know, um, to just like have been able to go through the last year and like still succeed. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's going to be a good few years leading into 2024 for Team USA, you know? I think people probably got you know they I mean they had to get mentally stronger you know um so I think 
I think we're going to see a pretty good team. And it, I mean, only, and I think because it's only three years away, you're going to see a lot of people keep only also people keep being like, it's only three years away, but like realistically, um, like the last three years of the quad do go really fast. So like, it is kind of only three years, but three years is such a long time. But I think since it's only three years, you're going to see a lot of people keep swimming that wouldn't have originally kept swimming. So I think that's going to be like, definitely. I mean, you always want like those like veterans that are going to like lead the way. Like, that's why it's like so amazing that Schmitty's there, like thinking of how much experience she has and to be able to pass it on to all these like younger kids, like these little teenage kids, like for her to have like that impact, that's going to like go for so much longer in like the team USA line. Um, yeah, that, that is like really special. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that is a great point that that's a great closing point uh for our podcast it's been so awesome talking to you and getting your insight on just about everything swimming <laughs> any parting yeah, thoughts I, I before we sign thank up? you for having me dude absolutely. maybe maybe we can nerd out again sometime melanie i i would <laughs> i would nerd out with you anytime <laughs> You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.